For three days, I had the pleasure of traveling in and around Grand Teton National Park. I saw a lot of really cool wildlife and I met a lot of really nice people. The one thing I didn't see though was the Millennium Falcon, even though Harrison Ford lives there. Anyways, if you've never been to the Grand Teton National Park, you're in for a real treat because I'm going to take you there. Come on, let's go see what we can find. Grand Teton's National Park, a vast, sprawling landscape filled with incredible beauty. At 480 square miles, this national park provides plenty of opportunities for exploration and adventure. And while the awe-inspiring Grand Teton Mountains often take center stage, this impressive 40-mile mountain range is a backdrop to one of the world's best locations for photographing wildlife. Heavy cloud cover and light but steady rainfall help set the mood for what would be an incredible three days of wildlife photography. As it turns out, most of the wildlife in the park prefers wet, rainy days, and it didn't take me very long to find this big, beautiful creature, a moose. All of that heavy cloud cover and rain was actually really helpful. It kept the temperatures down, and it made for some really nice, even light that prevented harsh highlights and strong shadows. And not to mention that slow falling rain also helped create a really nice atmosphere for the whole environment. This gorgeous moose had one thing on its mind a tasty swamp-soaked breakfast of lush green grass. Let's take a closer look at this big, beautiful creature. Look at this beauty. What an incredible looking creature. I was joking with a local photographer named Bo. I was telling him how strange these moose look to me with those long legs and that horse-like face. He laughed and said the locals call them swamp donkeys. How fitting. All of these shots were taken from the safety of my truck while this girl lazily grazed in the misty rain. It was a really surreal experience to be sitting in my vehicle watching this huge moose gobbling up grass. She didn't seem to have a care in the world. When she finally turned her attention to me, I couldn't help but smile. Come on, look at that face. What a cutie. Let's have a closer look. There, even better with all that grass hanging out of her mouth. Here are the settings I used for her photo session. The cloud cover wasn't letting in too much light, so I couldn't go for a high shutter speed to freeze movement but I was able to shoot at an aperture of 7.1 without raising the ISO too much. This helped create a wide enough depth of field to capture as much of this beauty and tack sharp focus as possible. When she finally grew tired of being in the spotlight, she just casually stuck out her tongue and then went deeper into the willows where I was able to grab this final shot of her still munching away. Let's go see if we can find any other moose playing in the rain. Aha, here's yet another big, beautiful female and what a big girl she is. A full-grown moose is between 4 and 7 feet tall, or 1.5 to just over 2 meters. I would say this one was somewhere right in the middle. I grabbed a few shots of her, and I was so eager to photograph her that I didn't even see her boyfriend standing a few feet away. Look at this beautiful boy, and check out those antlers coming in on the side of his head. They're all covered in a soft velvet. I grabbed a few shots before this big boy decided to play bashful and hide his face under his massive leg. Wow, thanks for the photo opportunities, you awesome animals. Let's go see what else we can find. All right, it's been raining all day. I'm still in Jackson Hole. It's actually been cool because we got some really cool stuff, but all these worms are coming out of the ground because of all the rain. Look at the size of this worm here. It's huge. Look at it. Look at, oh, oh. That's a big fat worm. You think it's gonna burrow into my skin? Grand Teton National Park is totally awesome. I think it's my new favorite place. And I wanted to see one of the park's more popular residents. I wanted to see and photograph a grizzly bear. So I teamed up with an incredibly talented local photographer named Isaac, who was not only nice enough to drive me all around the park and he came and picked me up at 4.30 in the morning, but he was also nice enough to share some of his favorite spots for viewing and photographing wildlife. Come on, let's go see what we found. It didn't take us long to find some beautiful animals. This impressive herd of bull elk made for some great images. Look at their antlers, they're all covered in velvet, and that background helps create quite the setting for these amazing animals. I really like the low-hanging clouds, then you have the fence line, and that huge group of multicolored trees. It's just beautiful. These were all shot handheld at f5 and 1 640th of a second. Just incredible. Then Isaac led me to a huge herd of bison. And apparently, this one bison had quite the itch. Nothing like using an old weathered tree as a scratching post. These animals are massive. They average just over 9 feet in length and weigh up to 1,400 pounds. For all you folks across the pond, that translates to 3 meters 
or 63.5 kilos. Yes, they are massive. And then off in the distance, we spotted another bison who appeared to be in trouble. It looks like this animal might be stuck in a deep hole and it's actually having a hard time getting out. But apparently it was just scratching its backside. Go figure. I grabbed a few shots of these big beasts before something off in the distance sent the entire herd running for the hills. Isaac told me that a pack of wolves had been recently spotted in the area, and it was a good chance that those wolves were what scared off the bison. And of course, wolves being the sly creatures they are, managed to stay hidden from sight, so off we went. I'm with Isaac. He was nice enough to take me out. He's a great photographer. You need to check out his stuff. I'll put uh, links in the, to his Instagram account in the description. But he knows this area really well, so he's taking me out to show me some really cool stuff. And we've already seen some really good elk stuff and some bison. But apparently there are a couple bears that hang out in this area. Yeah. And all of these people here is usually a good indicator that there's some bears here. So we're going to see if there are any around. Yeah. And thanks to Isaac, I got to not only see, but photograph my first set of grizzly bears a beautiful female bear and two yearling cubs, although only one cub came out to play. Mama bear kept her distance from the roadway, but that didn't prevent anyone from stopping to take a closer look. All of these shots were handheld and I used an aperture of F5. The bears were so far away that I didn't really need a wide plane of focus, F5 was just fine, and I chose a shutter speed of 1 640th of a second because these playful bears weren't moving too fast. I got this classic shot of a couple of big hairy bear butts before Mama Bear and her cubs decided it was time to head for the trees. But Isaac wanted to take one more spin around the park and we found these beauties. These gorgeous creatures are called pronghorn and all of them you see here are cute females resting in a nice meadow filled with flowers. Just perfect for pictures. Here's what's really interesting about these animals. They're the second fastest land animal on our planet. The only creature faster is the cheetah. These things reach speeds of up to 55 miles per hour or 88 kilometers per hour. That is fast. Although you wouldn't know it from these pictures because these are just, you know, relaxing, being lazy. The males grow long horns. And in a couple of these shots, you can see that the females also have little tiny horns. What cuties. Immediately after our visit with a pronghorn, we found this coyote slinking its way through the meadow. It was very eager to cross the road, and then it gave us one glance as it disappeared in this meadow full of dandelions. On my last day in Grand Teton National Park, I decided to get real early and go out and see if the bears were hanging out where they had been the past previous days. And boy, am I glad I did. Check this out. This is Grizzly Bear 399 and her two year old cubs. At 22 years old, she is the oldest female bear in the area, and she's had three sets of triplets three years in a row. She and her cubs are just beautiful. Let's get some pictures. Look at the size of this bear. She is massive. And in this shot, she looked right at me, chilling to say the least. It might look like I was really close to these bears, but I wasn't. I was using my 500 F4 and the 45 megapixel D850. These images are cropped so we can get a closer look. I was a good safe distance from these animals. The average female grizzly bear weighs as much as 300 pounds or 136 kilos. And from these shots, I would say bear 399 is easily that large, if not larger. I still can't get over just how big she is. This bear is also quite famous. A very popular photographer by the name of Thomas Mengelson has been taking pictures of this bear for most of her life. He helped put bear 399 in the spotlight and recently, officials have stated that they will now allow these incredible bears to be shot and killed in trophy hunts if they are outside of the park. The problem with this is Grizzly Bear 399 dens outside of the park, and several hunters have already said that they can't wait to shoot her. A few hunters have even gone so far as to call Thomas Mangelson, the photographer, and tell him that they are ready, eager, and waiting for her to take one step out of the park so that they can get their trophy. This is wrong on so many levels, and it's something that I just really can't even comprehend. Her cubs decided to take a break from grazing and pose in the flowers. I grabbed a few quick shots and then they decided it was nap time and I couldn't resist so I got some more pictures of these cute cubs. I couldn't believe all this was happening on my last day in the park. It was totally awesome, but then something completely unexpected happened. The cubs started nuzzling up to Mama Bear. These cubs were tired of eating veggies. They wanted something else. They wanted to nurse and in total disbelief, I watched as Mama Bear sat down and both cubs started to nurse. Simply unbelievable. 
I was so happy to have witnessed this incredible experience and capture these moments in time because there's a really good chance Bear 399 won't be here come next year thanks to the legal trophy hunting that takes place just outside of the park. I decided it was time to call it a day, but my bear experience wasn't quite over yet. As soon as I turned around, another female grizzly bear with two adorable cubs appeared in the meadow on the other side of the road. This beautiful female is named Blondie, and check out her two cubs. Wow. It was really amazing having two sets of bears on each side of the road, and I'm very thankful for the rangers and park volunteers who were super busy keeping their eyes on these bears at all times. The rangers made sure everyone kept a safe distance from the bears. Let's take a closer look at Blondie. Whoa, that is unbelievable. Look at the size of this bear, and it's pretty easy to see how she got the nickname Blondie. Look at her fur. She was nice enough to pose right next to some pretty yellow flowers. And her cubs seemed to think this was a good idea, so they stopped and posed in the flowers as well. I was busy snapping away without a care in the world. This is easily one of the most incredible wildlife photo shoots I have ever had the pleasure of experiencing. And then one of the bear cubs stood up on its hind legs. I focused on the cutie and pressed the shutter button. I waited for the usual quick sound of the shutter opening and closing several times, but only heard the shutter open and close once. The word full was blinking at me in the lower corner of my viewfinder. Both of my memory cards were full. A first ever for me. How awesome was that? Not two, not four, but six grizzly bears, two moms and four cubs, three on one side of the road and three on the other. That was insane. And oh man, what a cool experience. I'm so happy that I got to uh, be there and share it with all of you. And it's really a shame that they've recently allowed trophy hunting of these big, beautiful creatures. I personally don't understand it. What do you think? Go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below and uh, click the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. If you have any other comments, you know, leave them in the comment section below too. And don't forget about Isaac. Special thanks to him, man, for, for showing me where everything was. He's a very talented photographer. Go check out his Instagram page. Follow him. He does some good stuff. And until next time, I'll see you later.